Robles says if it wasn't for a chance encounter of his family driving past a boxing gym with a sign that read free week of boxing classes, he would have never gone to the gym. Begged his parents to let him try it. He went in and fell in love and left hand. Oh boy, Yankee Rivera sends Robles down. Beautiful left hand and he timed the fact that Robles was getting a little bit over aggressive without moving his head. Perfect left hand and that's exactly what Rivera's good at. He's got a smile on his face, but is he masking the pain? Here comes Yankee L. Rivera. Oh, he's rocked. The knees are buckling, and Robles is backing up. The legs aren't under him. He's flat-footed. Target practice now for the Puerto Rican. He'll suit Robles water to, to get out of it. Don't fight back right now. Just clear those cobwebs. Clinch. Just like that. Let's see what kind of finisher Rivera is. No, oh, he caught him another right hand. And Rivera turning an orthodox, looking for that right hand. I think he just stay stop, Paul, and keep digging the body. Yeah, we're seeing Rivera back to being the more disciplined guy we saw earlier in the fight. Last round, the footwork, the dancing, trying to get a little bit too cute in there. I think his corner told him, let's get back to the basics. Oh, man. Oh, Boy, caught him with a... Right hand finished it with the left. Believe it or not, that was a jab, Todd, but it was a power jab that was well timed. That was not a jab. Straight left down the middle, and now he's starting to score more regularly as Robles backs up. Those are heavy, hard shots being landed by Rivera right now. And I'll tell you, Robles could take a punch, man. And Benji Estevez just nearly stepped in to stop that fight. I think it was a Robles right hand that he let go just as Estevez stepped in there that prevented this fight from being stopped. And I, I would disagree. I mean, yes, I saw that too, but I, I don't see Robles in, in that much trouble. I mean, I still see him trying to land the clean shots. He's still looking for that right hand, still landing body shots. I think it would be a terrible decision if this fight stopped. I, I understand what you're saying. I think Benji Estevez has seen Robles backed up like that a few times, and at some point, there's only so much punishment you want to let a fighter take. Tony Palillo, 79 to 72. Robert Perez, 78 to 73. Walesco Roman, 77 to 74. All three are your winner by unanimous decision. He's still undefeated. Yankee, Dr. C. Chris. I have nothing against that. A, qu a quiet crowd just woke up and it had nothing to do with punching. That's Flair, That's baby. Let's go. Two good body shots and a great pivot out of the corner for Rashad Mahdi. He's feeling it now. Chris Maddox has a scorecard for this one. What do you got? Yeah, I've got it pretty wide right now in favor of Rashad Mahdi. 79-73. I gave Dakota Linger that fifth round when it seemed like Mahdi was still trying to adjust to whatever hand injury he suffered in the fourth round. But since then, while the pressure has been on the side of Dakota Linger, the clean punches, the volume punches, everything else has been oh, with Rashad Mahdi. Including the left uppercut. There it is again! You know how hard it is to land two consec three consecutive lead left uppercuts? Very difficult to do, but if, if you're Dakota Linger, you don't move your head and you can eat those up. I mean, it's incredible. And he keeps coming. That's intimidation right there. Mahdi's not gonna, he knows he's not gonna take this man out. My word. Well, they're gonna stop it. It is over. And finally, Rashad Mahdi, who came out to Shawn Michaels music, has his sweet chin music. See that right there? It was a left hook upstairs and a right hand downstairs. Back comes Kamnowski with the right hand downstairs. Creative combination by both big men. Oh, oh, big right hand, and Kolnowski is back against the ropes. That shook him. Kusumano better not let him off the ropes. Kolnowski's hurt. And that's how it started with Robert Elenius. One big shot that changed the course of the fight. We know Kolnowski can take a lot of punishment. 
but you wonder how much his corner will let him take considering his long layoff and three straight losses. The body shot by Kovnatsky, left hand to the to the body of Kusumano. Kusumano didn't like that body shot. There's that, right. there's that short right hand again. That, that's the one that he's been working on. You can see it. That's the one he's going to be looking for. It could be short or could be long like that. Oh, caught him again, and down goes Kovnatsky! A lot of time left. I don't know. I don't know, Sergio. He may be done. One more punch. There's going to be two or three seconds left. The bell might save him here in round one. Oh, the referee made it a long count and helped him out right there. There it is. Big right hand. And there goes the baby face stumbling back to his corner. That was a long, long count by the referee. That saved Adam Kamnowski. Sit down. You got to keep your damn hands up, Adam. Get some breathing together. Kamnowski should stab Kusamaro with, with jabs to the body. Upstairs and downstairs. Look at this comeback. The crowd is ruined. And now all of a sudden, Kusumano is unstable. He did the right thing by clinching right there. He might be hurt, but Kamnowski, he better concentrate on the body right now. That'll open up the uppercuts. I think Kusumano is, is, is more gas at this point than anything else. That's what happens to big men when they miss. Let's check it with Chris Mannix. Yeah, in between rounds, Keith Conley, the manager of Adam Kamnowski, went over and had a conversation with members of his family. He asked them, do you want me to stop this fight? They said no, but there is some genuine concern amongst the family of Adam Kovnatsky at this point. Oh, some big power shots landing now for the Sicilian Nightmare. I think this might be it, man. I don't like There's no upper body movement by Kovnatsky. Oh, now he's against the ropes. Stop the fight. And the referee Keith, taking a good look at this fight. I and like Keith it. Conley is in the corner telling them to stop the fight right now, telling them to throw in the towel well, back for comes, Adam Kovnatsky. Well, back comes Kovnatsky. So how can you stop this fight? And now Kovnowski! Incredible action here at the Garden! What a war! From the brink of destruction, Kovnowski is still in it! They've got the towel in their hand, Chris! This is wild. They were inches, moments away from throwing that towel in for Adam Kovnowski rally. This is flashes of... Riddick, Bowen, and Vander Holyfield back and forth, both these guys. Or how about Riddick, Bowen, and Andrew Galata before the Either riot? Man, I know I, I hate comparing greats to guys like these, but I'm telling you, the effort is great by both these men. Kusumano is uh, weary of jabbing because he knows that Konoski is looking for oh, a right counter. hand lands, and this may be the this is over. This they is over, guys. Stop the corner. They are throwing the, the towel in the corner. They threw in the towel, and it is over. The Sicilian nightmare jumping for joy as he picks up by far the biggest win of his career. What a fight. That's the way you want to see a fighter like Kusamano, but that's also what you want to see from a fighter like Kovnowski, giving it everything he had in his final hurrah. Yeah, good, up, good upper body movement by Quigley right there. Another thing we're not accustomed to seeing. He's laser focused on the eyes of Berlanga and reacting to every single thing Berlanga's doing. Great upper body movement right there by, by Quigley. Circling away from the power right hand of Berlanga. And look at that foot fake right there. Is that a knockdown? Yes, knockdown. it is. That's it's skimmed the temple or so it seems. Quigley says, six, yeah, okay, six, I'm fine. No, it was a chopping right hand that glanced the temple of Quigley. Berlanga did the right thing in chopping down instead of punching up at the head of Quigley. Quigley dipped down to that right side, and Berlanga chopped down at that punch. Very dangerous, very dangerous to keep dipping down to that same side. Quigley's going to have to keep defending to his left-hand side now instead of just finding a safe spot on the right side. That's what you don't want from Quigley, is to load up on one single shot. Oh, they're gonna call that a knockdown? That shouldn't be a knockdown, but they are. Five, he hits you, he fell. 
Six, he hit seven, you, he fell. Eight. Yeah, that's a tricky call for a referee to make, but I think it is the right call. Yes, Jason Quigley's legs got tangled up, but they got tangled up because they were moving away from a punch from Edgar Berlanga. Technically, yes, but I think uh, it shouldn't have been a knockdown, especially in a, in a, in a tight competitive fight. I mean, but technically, he's got all that matters, right? Not in boxing. Under a minute left, right hand scores for Berlanga. That's a knockdown. And that's it. Four knockdowns in this fight. Six, seven, eight. He doesn't have his mouthpiece in. I don't think the referee realized the mouthpiece is out. At this point, it does not matter. 12th round, Berlanga's coming on. Quigley's already showing signs of weakness as brilliant as he boxed. This is a 12-round fight, the championship rounds. Time to close the deal. Berlanga wants a knockout desperately. Can he get it? Time is ticking. All will be forgotten if Berlanga can get this knockout. Let's show you knockdown number one in round 10. That right hand right on the button. Yeah. Quickly tried to hold on, but Berlanga was too far away. But Berlanga finally switched up the attack. Instead of coming in with a jab, he came in with a hook, and that threw off. That threw off Quigley. It was a 3-2. Landed cleanly on an already tired Jason Quigley. Here's a knockdown number two. Edgar Berlanga pawing him down using his hand. The referee warning him there, but you could see that Quigley was hurt. That shouldn't have been a knockdown. No, he shouldn't have. pushed him down, but at that point, it really didn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here at Madison Square Garden, we go to the judges' scorecards. Max DeLuca and Frank Lombardi both scored about 116 to 108. Nicholas Esnall, 118 to 106. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. He's still.